Welcome to our telecast today. We are continuing to talk about this beautiful, wonderful good news. The only message that God has licensed believers to give to the world. Although we seem to have mixed a whole bunch of other things into, but the only message we have been licensed to give is the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. And so that means good news for you and good news for the world. If you have any prayer requests, and, and many people do, they, I have right now on my phone, you see that information there, it says the Grace Prayer and Partner Center, you can call there. Then there's a text phone. I have thousands of prayer requests on my text phone. We're praying and believing God with you. Also on that text phone, if you want to just ask for, say, our magazine, and another one is coming hot off the press very quickly here, and, and it will really help you. I tell you, there's articles there to help you, stories, testimonies, it, it'll help you, and it's free. It's only four times a year you got it, so it's not every month, but it's free. And, uh, and, and other material that we offer for free, and then of course we're offering some products as well uh, this, uh, this week and this month. And so uh, Pastor Nathan Thurber is with me here. In fact, he's gonna give us a little, we are tag teaming today, Nathan, and we seem to be doing that quite a bit. How are you doing? I'm doing well, I'm doing well, thank you. I look forward any, to it tonight. Any, uh, let, let me just ask you, because I was sitting here thinking, just as we were counting down, uh, to, to start the program today, that we are teaching things and you and I are going at it here. We, 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 we want to break people free from um, Christless religion, from, from, from shame and all that bondage that comes, that heavy burden that comes with religion. And, and then it, I'm just reminded again that as much as you and I are going to do our best to teach this, we need the Holy Spirit. Yes, absolutely. Uh, because the Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher. And I want you to be open to the Holy Spirit touching you. But Nathan, just before I know, because I, I, you've told me this before, so I kind of know a little bit what the answer will be. But for you, you came from quite a religious setting, brought up, but the encounter of the Holy Spirit and God's love changed you. So just let's start with that. And then I'll release you over to the preaching set in a moment. Absolutely true. It wasn't until I encountered the, the person of the Holy Spirit that the realities of the scripture uh, became real for me. They, it made this. It made the the words become real. Yes, God is love, but to experience that love, uh, that's the wonderful Holy Spirit that uh, that en enables us to experience uh, the person of Jesus. So it, it, it's God's love that is revealed, that is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So many people think, think, oh, the Holy Spirit, that's speaking in tongues and the gifts of the Spirit and power. Yes, uh, that, that's part of it, but it's not really an experience of power. It's an experience of God's love that mm. results in power. That's right. Well, faith works by love. And the first time Paul mentioned uh, uh, the Holy Spirit in the book of Romans was related to the Holy Spirit. You just quoted it. The Holy Spirit sheds the love of God in our hearts. And so... Yeah. Well, I, I want you to get over to the preaching set there. And I'll, when, I, when I see out of the corner of my left eye that you look like you're ready, I'm going to go over there. I see some of the cameras are turning already, but somebody stay with me here. Don't everybody go with, with, with Nathan now. <laughs> and so uh, just as he's getting ready, I just want to know that, that for the month, the month we're in right now of broadcasting, and it might just go a few days into the next month because we're counting for every, every four weeks, we're offering this special teaching that is a prophetic word for our times and for Canada. So uh, you can order that there, shipping and handling included. But this week, because we are raising so many issues about the new covenant, about God's grace, we are raising so many things we're saying about this. Uh, we are also offering this seven hours of teaching, freedom from sin consciousness. I see it on the, on the screen that I don't need to hold it up. Sit, walk, stand which is an exegesis from the book of Ephesians that really gives you a, a strong mega dose of the gospel covenant and set you free. So make sure that you order that, get that for yourself and for your friends. But I see that Pastor Nathan Thurber is ready. Over to you, Nathan. Well, it's an honor to be a part of this week. The old is dead, live the new and better. It's the theme we have in my message today is mission complete, order fulfilled. Working for this ministry, World Impact Ministries, 1999, 21 years ago. One of my first jobs and roles was to was that of in the uh, uh, mail room or the product fulfillment room. And so many of you have requested materials from the ministry, a book, a CD series. And so those that, that when that happens, there's a purchase order uh, that is made and it's sent to the to the mail room. And so at that time, that's where. That's where my role was, and so I'd receive your order, and uh, it would be a, a, a product order, and I'd have my job would be to fulfill that product order, and it would be it would be fulfilled when I'd put it in the mail, and 
hopefully you'd receive it rather quickly from uh, Canada Post. Well, the scriptures talk about the law. We're talking about the law, the old covenant and new covenant. The law is a picture of that old covenant. The scriptures talk of the law, the old covenant, in terms of an order that is given and, and an obligation uh, to complete or to fulfill uh, that order, like a purchase order, if you will. When I was in the mailroom, I had these purchase orders to send out products, and it put an obligation on me. Of course, once I mailed it out, the obligation was fulfilled, but I was always under an obligation to send you that which you had ordered until I had fulfilled or had completed the order. Well, when Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 5, he spoke of his mission in coming to earth and taking on human flesh. He said in verse 17, he said, Don't think for a moment that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I didn't come to abolish but to fulfill. I came to fulfill, Jesus said. In other words, he's saying, I came to fulfill all the obligations of the law or the, the old covenant, all the demands. In other words, my title, Mission Completed, uh, obligation fulfilled. That's why Jesus on the cross said, it is finished. He's saying, I, 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 I've completed my mission. It is fulfilled. I've, 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 all the obligations have been completed. You say, but Nathan, that's great for, great for Jesus. Of course, he would live perfect, and of course, he would, he, he would have the ability to uh, fulfill all the obligations, but, 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 but what about me? But it's important to recognize that what Jesus did, he did on our behalf. Again, you know, we recognize from the scriptures that we were all identified with the first Adam when he failed, but the scriptures also tell us that Jesus is the second Adam, and in, in Christ we've all been identified with his victory or fulfillment of the obligations of the law. We're identified with Christ Jesus. And so Jesus fulfilled all the obligations of the law on our behalf. It's a beautiful thing, and when we believe, we're identified with Christ and that fulfillment or his fulfillment of the law. The good news is we could not, we would never have fulfilled the obligations on our own. None of the great men of faith in the scriptures did so, not or women, but not Abraham, not David, not Ruth, uh, not, not Deborah. None of the great people of faith in the scriptures uh, fulfilled all the obligations of the law only Jesus, and we're identified with him. See, that's the good news of the gospel. The good news is your obligation to fulfill the requirements of the law were fulfilled in Christ Jesus. This is the good news. The problem is many Christians don't recognize that the obligations have been fulfilled, and they're trying so hard to fulfill these obligations and, and, and coming up short. And then, of course, the en our enemy, the scriptures tell us, is Satan, who's the accuser of the brethren, and he comes and heaps all kinds of condemnation and guilt. I mean, if I in, think of Nathan, think of me in the mailroom not fulfilling the purchase order, well, I'd get in trouble. Well, that's what a lot of believers think. Well, I, I, you know, they're, they're coming up short and not fulfilling the obligation, so they're living under condemnation and, and guilt. Of course, we're meant to live in victory. That's why Jesus came, so that we might live the abundant life. But it's in doing, we live that victorious life out of love for Jesus, having received uh, from him. But I got it to be clear. We've got to know our rights and, and push back against this condemnation and guilt because condemnation saps all the spiritual energy and strength. We're not receiving when we're under condemnation or guilt. But in Christ, we begin to recognize that the mission was completed. Obligation was fulfilled. The old is dead. The new hath come. That's why the, the theme this week is live the new and better. When we do, we live a victorious, abundant life. And I'm going to pass it back to Pastor Peter now. He has some important things to share, but stay tuned. Get ready to receive something good here on the program today. But back to you first, Pastor Peter. And, and all this has a very personal application in that uh, we receive from God. And maybe many people, you say, I want to receive from God. I, I want to know God better. I want to have access to God. Well, the basis is this. That's why Pastor Nathan and, and all the other guests I've had on the different panels, Tyna, all of us, we are fighting for you. I'm fighting. Some of you say, well, you don't need to do that. I'm fine. No, my, well, some people think that they are fine in their religious ritual, and they don't realize that what Jesus Christ has done. So please send your prayer request. You can see right now, I'm looking at the screen 
that you see there's two ways. There's a grace, prayer, and partner center. We, we can call there. There's a person who will answer your call. Unless you're calling in the middle of the night, then you have to leave a message. And text me. I love the texting. Because that, that you, you just send if you want free information, you want some of the material we're offering, like a magazine, you just ask for it, it's put your address there, and, and, and you'll get it. Uh, if you want to, there's other free material, you just get it. Or if you have a prayer request or a praise report, you, you'll just, it'll come to me. So I appreciate that so much. But right now, we're going to give you the mini version, the short, about a minute long or so, a little update of what's happening this month, something historical profound is happening and then I want to kind of add a little bit to what Nathan already shared so let's watch this right now earlier this year World Impact Ministries saw tens of thousands respond to Christ in campaigns in Africa and Asia this month World Impact Ministries is conducting a massive gospel campaign on Facebook live YouTube and other social media platforms aimed at sharing the message of Christ with the world's third largest language group, 490 million individuals who speak the Hindi language. Divided between 672 people groups, many live in areas where there is less than one Christian per 1,000 population. Based on one previous experience, we know that for every $1, we will reach 10 or more people. That means $100 reaches at least 1,000 people. Everyone in response will receive the 42-page gospel tract, Light of the World in Their Own Language. Will you make this possible by taking a step of faith? Give your very best gift to advance the gospel online at give.peteryoungren.org or call with your gift now at 416-745-1820 or text your gift 289-768-8934 or mail it to the address at the bottom of the screen. Please do what you can, but do it now. Thank you in Christ's name. I echo that, those words, thank you in Christ's name. He is the Lord of the harvest and we're doing this because of God's love that has touched our heart. There's no way, we can't love others, you know, not in the God kind of way unless God's love first has touched us. And so whether it's our Bible school campuses around the world, our campaign now to the Hindi speaking world, all the other things we're doing to touch the world with the gospel. And there are many more languages that we are reaching. Uh, many of them, people have not even heard of Jesus and we're able to reach them now. So thank you for what you're doing. And, and please consider becoming a monthly partner, sharing something every month, but do your very best gift right now. Well, uh, we have all been, we, we, we're working on this. We want to deliver people from Christless religion. And then you say, well, we have a little bit of Christ. Well, we, we want to deliver people from a religion where Christ is reduced, Christ is less. And so, and we have this great picture in the scripture. So much of the entire New Testament is wrapped around this, that there was a law of Moses that represents a, a religious system. It was temporary. It was for 1400 years. It was for Israel. Uh, but it shows the human inability to follow through and do right. How much, however much we try, we become short. We, we mean to do good and then we end up doing something bad. And so the key verses we've been looking at here is from the book of Hebrews, verse 7 in chapter 8, if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. If there was nothing wrong at all, if it was all just perfect, everything in the covenant of Moses, there was no reason to look for any other covenant. We could have applied that covenant to the whole world. So what was wrong? The, the wrong with the covenant of Moses was not that it was sinful or bad in itself. It couldn't make anyone holy. It couldn't change a human life. And, and then later on, here's another key verse. By calling this covenant new, referring to the gospel being new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. And it did disappear. And, and, and so again, not evil, not bad, just obsolete. The religious system, other than the finished work of Jesus Christ, is obsolete. It's outdated. Then yesterday in my teaching, I talked about this verse, and many people quote Matthew 5, 17, 
and, and, and they wonder what did Jesus meant when he said, do not think I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I haven't come to destroy, but to fulfill. We're talking not destroy, but fulfill. What does it mean? Jesus' listeners must have understood that he intended to fulfill everything. They, they got that. And the Greek term, you have to listen to yesterday's teaching, but, but I'll say it in a shorter version. The Greek term translated fulfill is also found in Matthew and Luke. And it means to bring to a designated end. It's an expiration date. Jesus came to bring the law, the religious system to its end. The law had been on a timer all along until Christ's finished work was fulfilled. Here is the big deal about that. You see, you make such a big deal about it. What's the big deal? The big deal is that in contemporary Christianity, there's a tendency to try to blend the two covenants. Put a, you know, let's have a little bit of everything. It's like when, when Simon Peter said, let's have Moses and Elijah and Jesus. Let's, let's have them. No, no. And this has allowed for strange and weird practices to enter the Christian faith. Let me mention just a few. Have you ever heard someone announce that God is about to judge our country, Canada, because of its sins? It sounds very righteous. I believe God's going to judge Canada for its sins. It sounds like there must be a very holy person saying like this. And yet this thinking is not from Jesus who said he has not come to condemn the world, to threaten the world, but to save. The, the, the idea of God judging nations for their sins is not rooted in the new covenant. Because the new covenant, the gospel says that Jesus put away the sins of the world. He put them away. And, and any judgment of the nations will be regarding whether or not they receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we got to be very careful. We don't find the Apostle Paul going in and saying, you know, God is going to judge the Roman Empire. Or you don't find him going to what is modern uh, Greece, saying God's going to judge Corinth and Athens and he's going to wipe you out. No, that is not gospel. That is not the new covenant. Another strange practice is to call a certain, don't turn me off, don't get mad now, to call certain buildings, places, or days holy. That, that's also from the obsolete covenant. In the new covenant, in the gospel, believers, we're called holy. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and so this idea, you see, is that, 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 uh, that, that, that some places are holy. I know, you know, when we go to Israel, we love to go to Israel. Tyna and I, we take tours to Israel. We love to go there. And most Israel tours, they call it a holy land tour. And you know, I don't get all uptight about that, but we don't call it Holy Land too, because it's just, he said, that's not nitpick. I, exactly, I don't want to nitpick, but you know, when I know how to say something right, I say it right. We call it Love Israel Tour, because it's, it's ob obsolete to call buildings holy, or call cathedrals holy, or call special days holy. The, the Bible teaches against it. So if you think I'm a nitpicker, bring it up. Give it to Paul when you get to heaven, because he sure talked a lot about that. Now, another strange idea is that too much of the grace of God encourages people to sin. That's an idea that you can't preach too much that God is good. This is going to make people sin. That's obsolete thinking. That's that. That's that's. You're not thinking right. You kind of the logic may seem logical to you, but it's not really gospel logic. It's an obsolete thought. Because the new covenant teaches that sin shall not have dominion because we are not under the law, but under grace. So the more we teach God's grace, God's goodness, the less sin has dominion. But some I ask, what about the Big Ten? <laughs> Say, what Big Ten? Uh, the Big Ten Commandments, are they not the foundation of Western society? What about their value? Yes. As we have said here many times, because I want to guard myself so that you don't think something of me that is not so, the Apostle Paul stated time and again that the Ten Commandments are holy, perfect, and just. Yes, they are. But what was wrong with them? They cannot make us holy, perfect, or just. Just like a mirror only shows the dirt on your face, and it's incapable of cleansing. So the Ten Commandments are powerless to remove sin. They only show you sin. They cause us an awareness of sin, uh, but also according to the Apostle Paul, and this is serious, they arouse in us a desire to sin. Imagine that. So when, the moment you hear, you shall not, 
There's something in you that wants to do the very thing you're told you shouldn't do. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ gives the power to overcome sin, death, and darkness. That's the hope of our society. If we are interested, and I believe many of you who are watching this are, if you're interested in the power of sin being broken, the answer is not the Ten Commandments in public places or even on your wall, bedroom wall, but to make Jesus known. Instead of posting the Ten Commandments, which arouse sin, put John 3.16 on display. If you want to have a nice little wall decoration, and you say, oh, it looks so, so, you know. Put John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You see, mixing the old and the new covenant hurts us. It hurts you and it hurts the cause of the gospel. One reason why early Christianity was so attractive that the Roman Empire turned from paganism to Christ within uh, two, three hundred years was that the early believers understood that the law was obsolete, obsolete. Jesus Christ was, was a redeemer for all. Jesus had torn down the enmity, which was the law between Jew and Gentile. Everyone was now on equal footing. Unfortunately, after centuries of muddying the waters, many no longer find the gospel so attractive. Have we poisoned our message? To mix the life-giving new covenant, the gospel, with the old religious system, the law that kills. It, it does kill. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It's like putting poison in a healthy salad. You say, well, that's strong words, Peter. Well, if my words trouble you, please read 2 Corinthians chapter 3 in its entirety. And you may find that the words of the apostle Paul are even more troubling than mine. Bottom line, the gospel is an attractive message, but we must know our message. And then, then we will discover that the world is more ready to receive than we ever imagined. As, as Pastor Nathan said in the beginning of this program, he, uh, he said that, you know, we, 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 sometimes we are accused of being judgmental and ugly as Christians. It's because we haven't understood the gospel. And you'll find that even some of the people who say, well, I don't believe in God. You say to them, well, what God do you believe in? Tell me the God that you think I believe in. And they begin to describe this menacing God, this, this angry God. And then I say, well, I don't believe in that God either. Let me tell you about the God I believe in, the God who is revealed through Jesus Christ. I say, well, what, what, just one way to say the stark contrast. When Moses went up on, the, on, on Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments, when he came down from the mountain with that, it says the people ran in terror. They were frightened by the Ten Commandments, by this, by, by the, 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 the law religious system. But it says when Jesus went up on the mountain and was declared to be the one that completed the law, Moses completed the prophets, Elijah, and when he came down from the mountain, it says people ran towards Jesus. And I believe today in your heart, you're running towards Jesus right now. We're gonna, I'm gonna join Pastor Nathan. He's still here in the studio in a moment. But I just want to give you that quick reminder of what we're offering this month. And I hope you get that. And then we're going to pray for you. So watch this. Scripture teaches that God sets nations in their time and place. Is this Canada's time? Is an unprecedented spiritual awakening possible across Canada? Peter Youngren's prophetic video message, When God Shakes a Nation, is provocative, stirring, and life-changing. Also included in this package is the four CD album, Vision 2020. In total, you will receive almost five hours of powerful teaching and prophetic proclamation designed to help you discover your destiny, your purpose, your place of fulfillment. Age, background, gender is no barrier. This is God's time for Canada and for you. Available with your gift of $37 or more, shipping and handling included. Order online now at peteryoungren.org slash TV offer or call 416-745-1820 or receive the digital copy for your gift of $20 or more by visiting peteryoungren.org slash digital TV offer. Well, I tell you, I, I finished by saying that people ran to Jesus and I want you to run to Jesus right now in your heart. Well, whatever your need is, whatever is urgent on your heart, 
run to Jesus. In, 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 your, in your inner man, just pull towards Jesus. And then, of course, you see the reminder there what uh, the announcer just shared about the offer this month. And I also want to say we have just for this week, not for the month, we have this as well. Since we are teaching on this topic, we are giving you this teaching, Freedom from Sin Consciousness and Sit, Walk, Stand, which is an exegesis from the book of Ephesians. Seven hours of teaching in all that you will also enjoy. So all those things are there. But uh, Nathan, I believe people are running to Jesus right now. People are running to him to receive because he's beautiful and good and he changes lives. So uh, w say something to people maybe who are hurting, who are in need. Um, uh, what should they do right now? As you say, run to Jesus, but he accepts all freely. I would just speak to him in, a, in, in your common language and, and tell him what's, what, what's on your heart and, and know that he is full of compassion, just like he was in the pages of the Gospels, never turning us away, not asking us what have we done to earn his favor, but speak to him. He's a comforter. In other words, don't turn on your prayer voice. Don't turn on your <laughs> going to church voice. Some people have heard them say, well, let's, let's put the church on. I don't want to put any churchies thing on at all. Let's be who we are. Yeah. Just regular people coming to God. And I would strongly encourage getting your CD albums because it's of the renewing of the mind yeah. uh, it, through the scriptures because the enemy keeps yeah. coming with these condemning thoughts over and over. He works overtime. We've got to we got to marinate our minds in these. And I, you don't hear a lot of sermons like you just preached. The, the law is obsolete. You know, it's not yeah. a lot of maybe ways that we can get God's and, and, blessing. And you know, I have a lot of teachings on this subject. I mean, many, many teachings. You can order them all, but it'll, it, it's, it's, it's a lot. So I put these two because I think when they, these were revolutionary for me when I discovered these truths. Let's, let's pray right now. Run to Jesus. Run with your need. Run with your pain. Run with your disappointment. Run with your discouragement. Say, Jesus, I put it at your feet. Father, I thank you for your love touching people right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the love of God touching into every room, those who are watching on their telephones, those who are watching on their computers, those who are watching on their television sets, I thank you for your love touching every person. In Jesus' name, He's the answer. Receive from Him. I, I want to hasten to say, if you don't know Christ, put, put that up on the screen there in the control room. Uh, we'll send you this material. It will help you. It will encourage you. And, and so uh, thank you for listening today, and thank you for what you're doing for the gospel you're loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1 or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.